Welcome to Goalie Training Pro TV, episode 48. Today we're talking about taking a puck right off your thigh. So, I'm um, playing hockey on Sunday and had something that never happened to me before happen. So I went to drop into my butterfly uh, and a guy took a wrister from here and I felt that oh, off the off my thigh, just off the inside of my thigh. You can see there's a little bit of bruise. I'm not a real bruiser, but um, and I was like, "Holy snappers!" And, and I think my pad, uh, my pants, maybe got hung up on my pad and lifted up or something because it's it's sort of weird because there's really good padding in that area. So my pants must have lifted up somehow and snap it went. But it made me think right away of you, not of me, of you. I made the save, by the way, but. <laughs> Um, you know, I was thinking, okay, here's a thing that you guys probably aren't even aware of. So two things that I thought of. The first thing I thought of was, oh, I hope that doesn't give me an acute compartment syndrome. That would suck. Uh, and then the other thing I thought was, I uh, hope I don't get hit there again because I'd hate to also get a myositis ossificans, which is probably exactly what you guys think when you take a, <laughs> take a puck off your thigh bone. So what are those two things? They're pretty rare. In my whole time working at the sport medicine clinic, I probably saw each one two or three times, uh, but here's here's what they are. Number one, acute compartment syndrome. So you might have had some teammates or know somebody who's had compartment syndrome, usually in their lower leg, and they've had to have surgery to release the fa fascia. That's a chronic or an exertional compartment syndrome. Acute compartment syndrome is when there's a blunt force trauma to usually a big muscle, and your muscle has connective tissue around it, the way a kind of a sausage has a casing. And that connective tissue, as you know, is called fascia because we do myofascial release to sort of work on that, the quality of that tissue that surrounds all the muscles. But that fascia is pretty pretty strong and it expands a bit, but only to a limit. Uh, and then it becomes quite restrictive. So what happens if you get bang with a puck on a big muscle and that causes trauma to the muscle and the muscle starts bleeding inside. That's what a bruise is. A bruise is just the bleeding and then as your blood just gets rotten, <laughs> it turns colors. I don't know how else to describe it. It's also why sometimes people would be like, oh, I got hit here, but I've got a bruise here in my knee. Like, but I, how did I hurt my knee? You didn't hurt your knee. It's just that, that bleeding kind of followed gravity down and, and you're seeing a bruise there. But anyway, so I get smashed here and then that muscle starts bleeding and it's bleeding inside the fascia. And if it's a really significant injury, it's gonna bleed so much that, that it fills up the fascia like a balloon and now it can't expand anymore. So what it means, and it sort of cuts off the circulation. So what it means is that that blood can't get out of there fresh blood, arterial blood can't come in to nourish the muscle. And now the, the muscle is basically suffocating. It's actually is a medical emergency. And it, and it wouldn't happen like, like I got hit right now and like, oh my God, I need, you know, but it's like, wow, this is really sore. Like, and it'll, it'll be swollen and your skin will probably be shiny and it'll probably be like warm to the touch. And like, just like, whoa, what is that? That's time to like, Get to, the, um, get to the hospital right away because what they're gonna do is they're gonna rush you, if you have actually have an acute compartment syndrome, they're gonna rush you into surgery and they're gonna basically open, open you up and open that fascia and this muscle is gonna pop right out pretty much. It's pretty gross. So they can't even sew your skin back together because it's so swollen and they have to leave it open for a few days and, and often they'll have to do a skin graft because they've opened that fascia and they can't, they don't stitch it back together. So now uh, you'll have, you'll have huge quads if that's, if, <laughs> if that helps at all. But a lot of times they'll have to do a skin graft to kind of close over it. So uh, it is a, yeah, it is a medical emergency because if you, it's not gonna go away by itself. <laughs> uh, icing isn't gonna fix it and it will, um, it will starve the muscle and the muscle will die. So, which, so it's just a weird thing. And, and again, if it's not on your radar, you just be like, wow, this is really, really weird. And you might let it go till it's, you know, longer than it should be. Um, the other one is called myositis ossificans. So it's basically 
a calcification in the muscle. And this is how it happens. Um, it happens when you get a blunt trauma smash like that, and then you know, a, a day or a couple days or before that's healed, you get another smash right on the same spot. So I remember for sure seeing it in a baseball player who um, was batting and he took a pitch off his arm. And then I forget if it was like a day later or a week later, but anyway, before that it healed, he took another one. And so kind of what your body thinks is like, wow, this area is like taking a beating. We need some more armor there because like our skin isn't really enough to like handle the trauma of being hit by a baseball all the time. So what it does is it actually, um, bone starts to develop in the muscle. Um, and you can, it's really weird because you can feel it. Like it's just like, yep, there's a big old lump of bone and it makes the muscle quite stiff as well. Now, it's not, it's not a medical emergency. Uh, it actually, your body reabsorbs it over time. So it just takes quite a while to, you know, get it feeling better, but the muscle is gonna be quite stiff during that time and, and susceptible to getting tears because obviously bone isn't like really stretchy. Um, so, if you do take a trauma, so for example, oh, I'll go to stick and puck tomorrow, I'll really try to figure out, hey, why, how did that area get exposed? Um, and then make sure when I play on Sunday that it's not gonna get hit again, even if I have to, you know, put a extra piece of foam or something inside, maybe even in my, long johns or something like that or t you know put a wrap with a piece of foam there so that if i do get hit there again it's going to dis dissipate that trauma um and again if it it like it almost wouldn't be if it was like my collarbone or something it's like okay that would really hurt if i took another ding off my collarbone but it's in the muscle and in those big muscles if they take blunt trauma that that can happen again pretty rare uh that one will over time like months and months it will reabsorb and 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 same thing it's not like you get hit twice and then all of a sudden it's like oh now i have bone in there it's like then your body starts to lay down bone or starts to sort of calcify in there and so you'll notice like why do i have this big lump in my leg and then you know over time it'll gradually go away again the first one medical emergency you're going to need a scalpel to fix that don't try it at home though <laughs> maria i think i know what to do <laughs> yeah don't try it at home uh so those are two really weird blunt trauma injuries but yeah i've um for sure i've seen um acute compartment syndrome from in hockey from a guy that got hit with a, a puck in the leg and uh Another one was a guy playing basketball and somebody came down and their elbow hit his quad um, and same thing. So uh, it happens. So just be aware so that you know what it is and what to do. And that's the scoop, gang. I will see you next week for episode number 49. Rumor has it on episode 50, there's going to be cake. See you.